Hey there, gardeners. Oh, as you can see by the ring around my collar, I have been out here working my rear end off in my garden. Uh, it's mid-March in California's Bay Area and the temperature is 80 degrees. Uh, welcome to uh, global warming. Uh, those of you who don't believe in global warming probably don't spend much time out here near the Pacific Ocean and uh, didn't notice that the currents have changed. Uh, trade winds on the Tropic of Cancer seem to have completely vanished. Uh, we used to use those back in Marco Polo's day. They aren't around anymore. Uh, good evidence, I think, that there's some weird things going on. And so the weather, I can't do anything about the weather. One thing I learned growing up in Chicago, and that is that if you allow the weather to affect your state of mind as far as, you know, get up in the morning and go, oh, it's raining, it's so gloomy, I feel down. You'll never be happy if you live in Chicago if you let the weather affect it. And so I made a, a pact with myself that here's my state of mind, there's the weather. And nevertheless, the current weather systems on the West Coast, now that we're in four years of drought, we just had the driest winter on record, which beat last year's winter, which was the driest one on record. We have just been through the warmest winter we've ever seen in Northern California. So it's hot and it's dry. I just got done tilling the soil in my garden and the, the soil is like June, probably. There's very little moisture in it. It's dusty and it's rather hard. Um, I've had to actually water the soil to work it during the month of March here. And so what this means to me is that if I don't get going now with my vegetables, I'm not going to be able to have enough water to, to really do any kind of food growing out here. So uh, I'm on top of the vegetable thing about 30 days ahead of the usual calendar um, to make up for the fact that the soil is a little bit on the cool side for corn. I started my corn inside the greenhouse because it's a Hawaiian super sweet and the seeds rot pretty easy in cold soil. I started my beans inside the greenhouse. These are things that I usually direct sow right in the ground and I usually do them in the month of April. But this year there won't be any water left in April to do this so 30 days ahead of schedule sprouted my seeds inside just got done moving them out here you can see all the little corn guys uh, nice tiny little corn plants right over there we got some rows of snap beans uh, it's gonna be a pole bean and so a couple of things I've done here one is right here you'll see that I have a big raised ridge of soil all the way around my garden over on the other side over there I have diked the garden so this garden is now a depression. It's like a like a waffle. Um, so that when I run water in here, it's not going to leave the edges of the garden. Everything has to stay on the inside. So that's one trick. The other trick was sprouting the seeds early uh, and getting them out here while there was still a little bit of moisture. I've planted all of the corn in little depressions, so it'll gather some moisture around. But I'm pulling off another trick here too. And one of the things I'm going to do is that I've taken all these black plastic planters over here. I'm going to fill them up with potting soil. I'm going to put a polymer starch uh, on the inside that will hold 25 times more water than the soil will. Um, and I'm going to put my vegetable transplants in there. And then around the bases of the pots where the water will leak out, I'm going to go ahead and put another crop. I'll put some bush beans in, in the soil underneath the pots and a little bit of lettuce, I believe. Uh, to catch the water that comes out. Alrighty, so here I've got uh, a 20 gallon uh, uh, poly tree tub. Uh, it's a recycle. It's already had a Japanese maple growing in it for a customer. In here I placed the potting soil. I'm using a, uh, uh, a raised bed and potting soil product here by one of the major manufacturers. You'll see here it has the OMRI certification here. Uh, it's for organic gardening. This is a nice product. It really is. Uh, good texture. It's not too expensive. Comes in three cubic foot compressed bales for a reasonable price. Cheaper than buying it by the little bags. Then here I have a product uh, on the lid right there. It says water wise and uh, 
front here it's got a brand name it says that it's soil moist but basically what this is this is a polymer starch um, it looks a lot like rock salt actually uh, in the native state but when you sprinkle it into soil this stuff will hold about 25 times more water than the potting soil will. Now you don't want to put too much of it in here. If you do that, it's going to all swell up into a big cloud of jello, come billowing over the sides. I'm thinking maybe uh, probably about that much, okay, per planter. What have I got there? Maybe a quarter cup. That should be enough of this stuff. I don't really, there isn't really a recipe on here for the application I'm putting this to. Um, They're saying I could use uh, an ounce of this stuff for a six foot row in the garden, um, but whatever. Uh, hopefully I won't have put too much of it in, because like I said, if you put too much of this junk in, it boils over the sides. You'll get jello all over the place. But, there we go. And then, once we get it in there, I'll spread it out a little evenly there. Make sure it's at least two inches below the surface. Then I'm going to take more potting soil, cover it over the top, because it needs to be buried in pretty good. Like that. Now we have the uh, you know, polymer is buried in the middle of the buckets here under the soil. Next thing is we need to have a little bit of good quality organic fertilizer added here. Um, that's a little too much, so we're going to share some of that with the other pots over here. That should do it right there. I'm going to work that into the surface of the soil and spread it around nice. Here I have my planters. They're ready. I have them sitting up against a wire fence here. I'm going to put some cucumbers. This is the next project I have here. So I'm going to put three cucumber plants on the top of each one of these. You want to know why is it three? Why does Bill plant three cucumbers in one barrel? The answer is, the old gardener once told me, when you're gardening, you put in one for the weather, one for the bugs, one for the gardener. And so things are done in threes. It's pretty good rationale. Usually you manage to get something for yourself if you do it that way. If you're looking for just one and you only put in one, uh oh, everything can go wrong when the birds come by and peck half of it out on you. All right, so I'm gonna put the cucumbers in the top of this. Now, one of the reasons I'm not planting in the soil below is because we're now in the fourth year of drought here in California. My earth has become so dry that if I attempt to go ahead and put crops in the ground, what happens to me is that by midsummer, the lack of groundwater just makes it almost impossible to keep moisture on the crops. And so I've been growing winter crops out here in the ground. We've had peas, we've got onions out there, it's cabbages and so on. Uh, so I've got all kinds of stuff that I've been growing. So I have been using the soil this year, but uh, that's during the winter. There was very little rain even this winter, and so it was almost kind of tense to get artichokes and cabbages growing here during the dry, the wet, what should be the wet months of our year. Uh, now that we're heading into the dry period of the year, uh, very, very early we're heading into the dry period, I've decided that if I put things in containers, and then I put the soil moist inside the container, that the container will hold much more water than the native soil would have. It won't evaporate into the surrounding earth, because that won't be touching. And then underneath the containers, I intend to plant short crops like peppers or lettuce, uh, snap beans, snap beans on bushes, around the bottoms of the pots. So the leaves will shade the pots to keep the black plastic cool in the sunlight, and the, the crops underneath the pots will catch whatever water runs down through the containers when I'm watering the crop that's in the pot. Trying to use as uh, much common sense here with our water as possible. I've depressed everything. I'm enhancing the ability to hold moisture in soil. I'm making sure that I have more than one crop catching that water and so on. So now I'm going to move over here to the other planters and start to put some stuff in the ground underneath. Now I'm over here on the north side of my containers or the shadow side of my pots and uh, I've got some Tom Thumb lettuce here. And so on the darker side of the container, I'm going to grow lettuce plants. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick in snap beans on the uh, 
sunny side of the containers, or that is the south side. Well, I've got my snap beans now here at the base of the containers. Um, I don't have anything inside most of the pots yet because they're waiting for the tomato plants. Over here in the shadow side, we've got the Tom Thumb lettuce. Well, it's right next to a row of pole beans there, some Vortex pole beans. And again, as you can see here, everything is diked in. I have uh, big piles of soil all the way around this place hold in the moisture. Over there by the fence are my cucumber planters. Um, we'll get some parsley, I think, is going at the base of those. We'll catch the water coming out of them. Well, so there you have it. Uh, my attempt at trying to uh, uh, keep up with drought here, I refuse to give up. I will not give up on my vegetable garden. Uh, it's going to be a tough year. And I got a lot of trees in the yard over here, apples and pears and cherries and citrus and avocados and mac nuts, bananas and such that will be sucking the soil dry uh, as we start to head into summer. And uh, the trees will manage usually if this drought gives up in a year or so. I think my trees will be okay, but the vegetables, they just can't compete with all the woody roots around the garden here. and so. I'm having to lift the garden a lot this year and bring it actually out of the soil for its own good. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, check in later. Happy gardening. I hope all of you listening don't have any problems with water this summer. <laughs>